there are a couple of things. One thing is that you know unions are an attempt to level the playing field for workers. Um, so workers are now being demonized, right? All of the budget crisis is basically being blamed mm. on workers who are making, you know, I don't know, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year. Oh, um, <laughs> so they're not. It's not about you know the people who are making tremendous amounts of money. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons that workers are being attacked. Is that they are, you know, they, this idea that they're not um, that workers should not be entitled to middle class wages, to health insurance, to pensions, all of the things that came out of the New Deal. Part of the thing, Francis Perkins, who later became the Secretary of Labor, um, was at, was in um, Washington Square Park at the sighting of the, at the time of the Triangle. She saw women jump to their deaths. And she said later that March 25th, 1911 was the beginning of the New Deal. For her, it had such an impact that she basically fought to get those regulations and to make sure that those social programs that came out of the New Deal existed because she knew that, you know, in her, her heart from seeing these people jump out of the windows that this was really, really important. Mm -hmm. Well, well I, I think the first group that they looked to attack were the teachers. Not recognizing that the fact that the school systems have changed. When teachers initially started, there was a there the there was maybe somebody that stayed at home, and 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 uh, the teachers were teaching uh, students. Now the institutions of education um, are places where a lot of parents drop off their kids, and the rules that the teachers or the stress that the teachers have is a lot different framework than just educating. And what they've done is they try, these uh, cities have tried to pit the parents against the educators, saying that they're not doing their job uh, because they're not educating our kids. And then these, the systems uh, uh, don't give money into the education system uh, for them, for these teachers to be able to educate the, the kids. It becomes a different world. And, and uh, so the first thing they do is they attack the teachers and say, our kids are, are, are not bright because it's the teacher's fault, not necessarily the structure of the education right. system. And of course, the like teachers, to. can I just say, the teachers that are being attacked, this whole thing about, you know, all these young dynamic teachers who, and all these, you know, terrible old teachers who are being, um, you know, who should be, you know, who have tenure, essentially. Well, those teachers, those experienced teachers, make like twice as much as the young mm -hmm. teachers. So I'm sure there are wonderful, dynamic young teachers, mm -hmm. but it's all about money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, not only that, I mean, just, uh, it's also about trying to destroy the public school system. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the charter schools, uh, which have now come about, and which I, I am gathering are being funded by major corporations, and by tax dollars. And by tax dollars. Uh, it's really what they're trying to push. So, yeah. Right. It's essentially taking public money out right. of public education. Absolutely. Yeah, but, but when you talk about Wisconsin, I think there's something even more diabolical going on. Uh, recently, uh, Governor Christie in New Jersey uh, so, sort of tried to set the stage in saying, it's all of us against the public employees. That's what's wrong with the system. Tax pay, the tax, taxpayers against the public employees. Uh, I mean, I think that the, you know, if, if you're going to take sides and, 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 and who this, you know, the sides need to be, it's working people on one side and the very rich on mm -hmm. the other side of the equation. And, and, and the Republicans and the conservatives have been very, very good at sort of distorting uh, the public image of what, what the situation really is. And, 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 and the American public buys into that. Uh, you know, you also talk about uh, you know, Wisconsin and, and you know, why, and, and we, we've tried to link what's going on in Wisconsin with the Triangle Fire. Um, we were at a rally a couple of weeks ago uh, supporting Wisconsin public employees, and one of the speakers said, well, maybe, uh, you know, governor, the governor has, has started a prairie fire out there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, maybe it does take a fire 
to, to get people's attention, whether it be a prairie fire in, in the Midwest by a governor who's, who's willing to strip the rights of public employees to, to represent themselves, or whether it's a fire in a building in, just off of Washington Square where 146 women died. Um, the, the other thing, you know, it, it's, a, it's 100 years later, and in, in many respects, nothing has changed. Uh, the Triangle Fire was an industrial accident. But you look back just most recently at the mine disaster in, in, in West Virginia. You look at the oil the disaster on the Gulf Coast, which is looked upon as a ecological disaster. But 11 men were incinerated on that oil rig. And why were they incinerated on that oil rig? Well, there are probably lots of reasons that they'll find. But I'll tell you, a lot of them are that the companies that own the rigs and the companies that that built the rigs were cutting corners and trying to get the bottom line as high as possible mm -hmm. for the owners of those businesses with a disregard for the workers. And I think <clears throat> one of the things that Triangle has to say to this, the people in this country is that workers are important. People need to go to work every day expecting that there's going to be conditions in those factories at, at the job site which will allow them to come home in the evening. And I think that's, that's how you sort of tie Wisconsin and, 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 and the Triangle Fire and, and the industrial accidents that, that still continue. Uh, in, in South Africa, I was traveling uh, maybe three years ago. I uh, can't remember where I was, but uh, those, uh, those factories that you talk about then still exist or do exist in South Africa now. Um, huge um, Chinese uh, manufacturers in South Africa, just tr a tremendous amount of Chinese. And uh, the factories, uh, sweatshop factories, and I just couldn't believe it when I saw it. You, you don't have to go that far sure back. Last, <laughs> last December in Bangladesh, a fire that was eerily similar to the Triangle Fire occurred. Approximately 30 workers lost their lives. Mm -hmm. High floor of a factory building, doors were locked, workers jumped to their deaths. We've exported our garment industry. Uh, you know, first, I mean, they, they, they would go to places where the workers were paid less money. First, the garment industry moved to Mexico. Right then, it moved here. To, then it moved to Central America. Yeah. And when that got too expensive, it moved to China. Yes, and it right. got too expensive in China. So now it, it resides in places like South Africa and Malaysia, Bangladesh. And uh, I, I think what's important is that people need to walk into the shops where you buy your clothes and take a look at the labels where the garments are made. Mm -hmm. I, I, I always challenge myself when I walk into a store to try to find something that's American. It's very difficult. It's extremely difficult. We have to challenge our news outlets also. Um, that's another thing. Um, the, there were news stories in December. This, this uh, factory fire in Bangladesh happened December 14th. There was a news story in the time. There was a news story in, in other newspapers, but then they were immediately dropped, and they never followed up to tie what company the Bangladesh factory mm -hmm. was actually making clothes for. It turns out it was for the Gap. Huh. Um, I wouldn't be bad if I didn't try and bring it all back home. Here at BAD, we always want to know how the Bronx was a part of our history and her history. Uh, we know there were Bronx workers that uh, worked at the factory, some of whom died. The, the jumper who survived was from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. We also want to know, you know, what is the queer hidden history there uh, in that factory. And certainly uh, many of the issues and, and themes that uh, are provoked by seeing this documentary are relevant to the Bronx. Um, Certainly the politics of fire, uh, child labor, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a feminist, I'm certainly struck by the irony of, which I've seen again and again with, with sweatshops of women producing, you know, clothing uh, for consumption, clothing that often is, is unhealthy. I mean, look, did you see the waist sun on those shirts and the bustles and the heels and and all of that, that irony. <laughs> the, 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 now, a huge part of this history is also the witch hunt against socialists. Um, these Eastern, many of them were Eastern European Jews 
fleeing pogroms, fleeing uh, massacres, and they brought to the Lower East Side uh, radical ideas, communism, socialism. I mean, they founded the labor movement in this country yeah. because they were they had a revolutionary roots, mm -hmm. um, and. And one of the things that Anne Morgan freaks out about is that there, it wasn't just about working conditions. It was a vision of a different That's kind right. of society. Um, and it was an uprising. And then how interesting is this question of uh, the interrelation with the suffrage movement? You know, they're really talking about women's political power, um, police brutality. Does that ring a bell? 